again everyone. Today I am here with some more custom nibs on various pens and I also wanted to introduce this Ranga brand pen which is what these two are. Uh, Ranga is, a, uh, is an Indian company and they sell direct from their website and then they also sell through Peyton Street pens. Uh, I'm not sure where else they might sell but those are the twos that, two that I'm aware of. And so I got each of these with a custom grind nib that, um, I don't want to say it's sort of like a mass market custom grind nib, but they are they were already available, like it wasn't on demand from Peyton Street Pens. And then this one also has one of their custom grinds in it. And I've had sort of varying experiences with the three nibs. So uh, these two are both architect grinds. This one is a broad, which has been great. And I'll open it up and show you the nibs here shortly. And this one has a fine architect grind, which I have found to be a little bit on the scratchy side. So one thing to know with architect grinds is generally when you order them from somewhere, they will ask for a picture of how you hold your pen or, or a video or something like that because it is sort of angle dependent of, of how you write. But uh, these were sold without that. They did not request the angle and, and I got this one first with this pen and because I had such a great experience with this nib, I thought it was fantastic. I thought, well, because this was kind of an experiment, I was like, hmm, they're not even asking what angle I write at, huh? Um, but, uh, so when I got this and had a great experience, I went ahead and order, ordered another one. And then I ordered a cursive italic grind for this one. This is a, a fine cursive italic. And both of these tended to be, tend to be a little scratchy. I've actually already switched the ink out once on this one. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit out of the frame there. Um, I've already switched the ink out once on this one. The first ink that I had in here was, uh, diamine mistletoe from the 2019 Inkvent calendar and it was just too dry. It's, it's quite interesting because that's one of the first um, diamine inks in that series that I consider probably too dry for me generally. Uh, so I swapped it out and I put a Twisby, I think it's emerald green in here. And, and that did help with the nib. I'm actually wondering if I want to go even wetter with my ink and, and to see if that would help. But let me go ahead and get my little notebook that's here in this Galen leather pouch. Let me zoom out just a little bit. So I think I was a little too zoomed in, likely to get off out of frame there. So let's see, I'm going to find a page. Let's just do a new page in here. And this is Nemesine paper that I have in this little Galen setup. And Let's go ahead and start with the good news. <laughs> so uh, this Ranga pen, I'll, I'll put a link to the model that it is down below because I've forgotten now what, what the model name is. But uh, this one is in a pink and blue colorway, which I thought was really beautiful. And what I think is kind of interesting is um, around the time that I'm shooting this video, there, I actually saw an Edison pen that was soon to be coming to Goulet pens that has the same color uh, combination. So I'm not sure if they got their blanks, like the, the actual acrylic blanks from the same place, but I don't know. So Ranga, like I said, is, in, is an Indian pen company and their prices are really good. You can get a really good quality pen for um, a really decent amount of money. Uh, so this one is acrylic. This one here is uh, ebonite, and um, that that's a little bit more rare, which is it's basically hard rubber. And uh, I kind of just basically wanted to feel what that would feel like in a pen. I don't find it all that different from the acrylic, to be honest with you. And uh, this material can actually fade over time. I think that's one of the reasons why they went away from it from for producing pens, but, uh, but it is kind of interesting to feel how it feels and, you know, just try it out for a pretty inexpensive price. So let's go ahead and write with this one. So this is a Ranga uh, I'm just going to call it an acrylic model. with a 
broad architect. Yeah. So uh, as you'll see, I'm writing in very broad lettering. I think the broader nib is conducive to writing bigger. This is beautiful. It has great uh, variation. So here's the up and down stroke and there's the side to side stroke. So that's essentially what makes an architect nib an architect nib. You get a thinner line up and down and a fatter line side to side. I believe they also call it a Hebrew nib because it's good for Hebrew writing. Um, and I'd also recently heard someone call it a Japanese nib, but that was the first time I'd ever heard that. So I don't, I don't know how accurate that is. So, um, so this is just a typical acrylic pen. It's kind of large. Most of their pen models are quite large. And then you can just twist this off. This is, <laughs> this is one complaint that I have about these pens actually. Uh, and then there is a converter in here. So just typical cartridge converter pen, but supposedly you can also convert it to eyedropper because it's all plastic in here. So uh, the th there is a quite a long threading area. So it takes quite a few rotations to get that piece of the pen back on, which I mean is good and bad, depending on how long you wanna be screwing on and off your pens. Same is true for the cat, but not as many. Um, but I think it's beautiful. This pen I'm super happy with. I, I, I'm really glad that I tried it out and I love the architect nib. So this is the other one. This is called the Monterey and this is specifically for made for Peyton Street pens and it has this so it'll screw on to the end after it's screwed there and again there's quite a few rotations to get it to screw on. And actually the first time I tried to screw it on, it had some um, issues screwing on, but it's quite a large pen with it posted. <laughs> and at this angle, it looks like, <laughs> it looks quite comical. But, uh, so I generally write with it without the cap on. Um, but again, the feel of the pen's quite nice. In here you have another uh, converter inside here. And again, it's a very long twist off period. And the converter came with the pen. So, um, but yeah, you're like twisting forever to put that bit of pen back on. And so this is a Ringa Monterey. And uh, this has a fine Fine architect nib. And you know, this one's fine. I, I don't really have too many issues with it. I think maybe my main issue is just that maybe a fine architect nib isn't up for me. You know, I mean, that could totally be it. So you can see it's both finer up and down and side to side from this one. Uh, like I said, the writing experience got a little bit better with um, the wetter ink. And I'm thinking I can probably go even wetter. This one is not as scratchy as the next one, which I am going to show you. Um, oh, and like I was gonna say, the angle for me is fine on both of these nibs. I, I actually t played around with it a little bit with writing with different angles. And this actually is a comfortable angle for the nib, for both nibs, and uh, it worked fine. So this, uh, this pen, I should probably talk about that quickly first. Uh, this pen I purchased from Jet Pens. It is a Moon Man pen, fairly inexpensive. And uh, this is uh, the Rodden, a part of the Rodden series. This one is in purple. And then I ended up swapping out the nib for a fine cursive italic. And actually I see there's like a little bit of grit in the nib. And this is part of the problem with this nib because it's so fine and like basically scrapes the page. Um, so this is, let's see. And let me try writing. Moon Man, uh, Rod in Purple. Uh, with a fine cursive italic. And part of it too is, uh, so this is KWZ's Sheen Machine. Sheen 
machine. It's actually a little better on this paper than it was on the Tamale River paper that I was writing on. Um, and then here it is up and down and here it is side to side. I think that this particular ink dries out in my environment a little bit easier than, um, than some other inks. So I think that I'll probably try to switch it out for a different, a different ink because I think I really need, given, given the, I don't know if you can hear that, given the inclination for it to be a little scratchy side to side, I, I think I do want a wetter ink in here. And this is a lovely ink, but um, it does have some, some troubles. So I found that always it's a good idea to test pens with a variety of inks. And uh, but, but if you don't like something right off, you know, try, try a different variety of inks with the pen and just see, is it truly the pen that you don't like or is it the pen and ink combination? Because I found that that is often the case. Okay, well that was that. Uh, like, Hello again everyone. I'm probably going to tack this to the end of this video with these uh, Renga pens and then the nibs that I purchased from Peyton Street Pens. I wanted to add this to that video because I really feel like I've partially done a disservice to the nibs especially. Uh, because after I did this video, as you can see down below, I flushed out both this pen and this pen and flushed out the nibs so that I could make sure that there wasn't any debris from the grinding process left in the nibs. And as it turns out, there was, and that's what was causing the scratchiness. So here is the um, Moonman pen with the fine cursive italic before I smoothed it. And here it is after I smoothed it, or, or I'm sorry, before I flushed it and after I flushed it. And it's like night and day um, because now it is quite, quite lovely. And you can hear that it's much smoother on the paper. So this is just sort of a lesson in don't just fill up your pens. <laughs> I've never really had this issue, even with, with purchasing specialty grinds, just as like uh, standalone nibs. So I didn't really think that that was the issue. But after watching a few videos, and uh, actually the, the latest, well, it may not be the latest when you're seeing it, but uh, one of the latest videos from Fig Boot on pens, where he talked about some specialty grinds, and he had a close-up of some of his nibs and the nib before he had flushed it had all kinds of debris in the in between the tines and so when I saw that I thought well let me give this another shot by flushing these nibs so I did that and like I said night and day so so this um, fine cursive italic went from being really scratchy and yucky to being one of my favorite nibs. So I'm, I'm definitely going to be keeping that nib on here because it's amazing. So the other nib, the um, I, I'm not going to write with it today because I've actually taken it off <laughs> of this pen and set it aside to put on a different pen later. Uh, but so you'll see I also changed the ink out. So this is the uh, fine architect nib up here, which was a little a little fine and scratchy. Uh, after flushing, it was much smoother. It still was a little sharp for my taste. And I think that's really just because it's a fine, because it's a fine architect. And, and that was just not something I wanted on this particular pen because I wanted to use this pen for everyday writing. So, um, so like I said here, still a little sharp, but much better after a cleaning. And then I put in Waterman Mysterious Blue, which seemed to flow a little bit better as well, or at least a little bit more consistently than the, um, the diamine ink that I had up here. So uh, what I did want to show you, though, is that I did one last swap out. Oh, and, and with this one, you know, I had no problems with this nib and this pen with this bold architect. It's like smooth as butter. Um, so I'm not going to show you that one again, but I just wanted to say that this this one has never been an issue. And again, these are all nibs from um, Peyton Street Pens that they have on their website, which I'll link to below. 
And then I wanted to do one final little note on this one because I have switched out the nib yet again <laughs> on this particular pen. Well, not yet again. The first nib that I had on it was the Fine Architect. And I have switched it out to a Franklin Kristoff. Uh, and I believe I put a medium SIG on here. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a medium SIG. So it's an italic nib that where the, uh, the angle at which you hold it changes the thickness of the line but the thickness of the line really doesn't change a whole lot depending on where you hold it but you could also essentially use it as a fine cursive italic and this nib is stellar <laughs> i must say and so you can see here how the writing was in the mysterious blue with this fine architect nib which is just a very fine nib and then here it is it's so smooth and wonderful. Okay. And so there's a lower angle, higher angle, a little bit of a higher angle. See, the, the difference isn't that great. You're also going to get a little bit of difference side to side, but not much. So, um, and again, this is Waterman Mysterious Blue. I chose the Waterman because the Waterman ink because it uh, is supposed to be a good flowing pen. So you can see it's a little bit darker with this, but again, I think it's just because this is a medium italic nib, a sig nib from Franklin Kristoff. This is actually one that they have for a limited time in this dark finish. I don't know if they're going to continue to carry that for uh, a decent length of time. So if they don't have it, I, I think they pretty much will always offer the uh, sig nibs as standalone nibs so i did want to introduce those to you i think i've, I've shown you those on the channel before but um and and the the nib meister who does these works for franklin christoph and she does a great job um i have to say i've seen a progression in her work because i i have a couple of earlier ones and then compared to this one which is my most recent one i feel like they're getting smoother over time although from the very beginning they were great grinds but i feel like this one is just amazingly smooth so uh so this is what i put on here really just because i wanted this particular pen by ranga to be an everyday writer as opposed to this nib which is more of a specialty nib so i'm going to put it on a different pen where it'll be more appropriate. I still have to kind of decide. I have a double-ended um, a double-ended pen BBS pen coming that accepts size six nibs, so I might end up putting it in that just so that I can have that for drawing and then have uh, you know the 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 fine architect on one side and then I haven't decided what I might have on the other side. But it might work well for drawing as opposed to everyday writing, which is what this is. All right, so I just wanted to follow up real quick because I didn't want you to think that the nibs from Paint Street Pens were not worth getting because after a little flush with water, basically I just flushed water with a little bulb syringe through the nib unit piece. Actually just, I actually just, um, I screwed, oh God. of course it's the Ranga pen, so the, <laughs> it screws off forever. Um, so I took this piece off and then I took the converter off and just flushed water through here so that it could go through the nib and get any debris out. And that worked perfectly. Okay, so I'm going a little long here, but I just wanted to follow up with that so that you get an accurate picture of the quality of these nibs because they are actually great nibs when they're flushed out. Although this one didn't require any flushing, I would recommend if you get some in the future, uh, just flush them out so that you can just, you know, experience them at their best right away. All right. Well, that's it. That truly is it for today. Have a great day. I hope to see you next time. Thanks. Bye.